and welcome to the first video in the cardiovascular system series of lessons. We're going to begin our first series of videos by taking a look at the heart, then we'll move on to the blood vessels, and then finally we'll take a look at the blood. But what is the cardiovascular system? The cardiovascular system is primary purpose is to supply body cells with nutrient materials and carry away waste products. It's a closed circuit system. This is a good thing. It means it's all self-contained. We don't want blood spurting out of our bodies. So it's a self-contained, it's a closed system. It's composed of things like the heart, arteries, capillaries, veins, and blood. We have two major divisions within the cardiovascular system. We have the system, a portion of the system that brings blood to the lungs, and then we have the portion of the system that brings blood to the toes and back. The pulmonary circuit is going to bring deoxygenated blood, meaning blood low in oxygen. This has been used by the other parts of the body. It's going to bring that deoxygenated blood to the lungs where gas exchange will occur with the lungs. It will remove the carbon dioxide, it will bring in oxygen, and then it will bring it back to the heart. And then the systemic circulation kicks in. The systemic circulation is the part that brings the blood to the toes and back. And that will bring the oxygen-rich blood to the toes and bring the waste products back. So the technical definition of all this is the pulmonary circuit carries blood to the lungs and returns to the heart. It eliminates CO2, carbon dioxide via the lungs and oxygenates the blood. Systemic circuit supplies blood to the rest of the body, delivers oxygen to all the body cells and carries away waste. So again, basically what we're talking about here is that the pulmonary circuit goes to the lungs gets rid of the carbon dioxide, brings in the high oxygen. The systemic circulatory portion will bring the oxygenated blood, high in oxygen, to the toes, exchange the gases, and bring back the waste product. So those are the two circuits within the cardiovascular system. We have the location of the heart. Where is the heart located? Now, whenever I ask this in class, I go, where's the heart located? People kind of go, is this a trick question? No, it's not a trick question, okay? It is about 250 to 300 grams in an adult human being. It is about the size of an adult fist. So whatever size your fist is, that's about the size of your heart. It's about 14 centimeters long and about nine centimeters wide. The heart is located within the thoracic cavity. If you remember from the skeletal system lessons, the thoracic cavity is up here, okay? You have the ribs, the sternum, manubrium body is xiphoid, and the thoracic vertebrae. This forms the thoracic cavity. So it's located in here inside a specific area called the mediastinum. It's surrounded by different structures. So in the front, we have the sternum. The sternum is located in the front. So it's posterior, the heart's posterior to the sternum. It's behind the sternum. It's medial to the lungs. The lungs are out here. The heart is medial to the lungs. It's towards the midline compared to the lungs. It is anterior to the vertebral column. Your vertebral column is your backbone. It's anterior. It's in front of that. It's on top of the diaphragm. The diaphragm is this big muscle right here that is responsible for mechanical ventilation. In other words, breathing in and breathing out. And about two thirds or so of the heart lies left of the midline. It will lie left, so it's not directly right here in the middle, it's to the left of the midline. So let's review again the location. It's about the size of your fist, a little to the left of the midline, it's behind the sternum, it is posterior to the sternum, it's anterior to your vertebral column, it's medial to your lungs, and it sits anteriorly on top of the diaphragm. There are four different surface areas and things that we need to know about the heart. For example, we have the base, we have the apex, and then we have the three surfaces. The three surfaces are the inferior or diaphragmatic, the anterior or sternocostal, and the left or pulmonary. The base of the heart is actually up top. I know this kind of sounds counterintuitive because when you think of a base, you think of a base, a bottom area. No. In the heart, 
the base is located at the top. It's located superiorly. The base is the flatter area up here. The apex is the pointy area that goes this way. So the base is formed by the left and right atria, mostly the left atria. We'll talk about chambers of the heart in a follow-up video. The atria are the two top chambers, while the ventricles are two big bottom chambers. Okay, that'll get you through this explanation. It is found beneath the second rib. So if you feel up here, you have your clavicle here, and then right underneath you have like rib one, and just kind of follow it down, and you can actually feel the spaces if you palpate, palpate being a, a, a big word for touchy-feely, okay? So right about here is where the base of my heart is located at, okay? And then we have the apex. The apex is the pointy area, not so much pointy, more of a, it comes to kind of a triangular head, more or less, and that's gonna lie in the left fifth intercostal space, intercostal between the ribs, so if you have two, Count down three, four, five. So it should be right about here. It's not down here. The heart's actually pretty high up comparatively. Okay. It angles downward and to the left, and it's formed by the left ventricle. Little heads up, the left ventricle is going to be the bigger of the four chambers. It's a very powerful, big, whoo, pushy thing, all right, which we'll talk about later on. We have the different surfaces of the heart. We have the inferior or diaphragmatic. Now think about this before I give you the explanation. Inferior or diaphragmatic. Inferior means going towards the bottom. And the diaphragm is this muscle here. So inferior or diaphragmatic, meaning that this portion of the heart probably is towards, lies next to the diaphragm or lies down towards the bottom. It is, in fact, lies on the underside. It's formed by the left and right ventricles. Then we have the anterior or sternal costal. Again, think about the terms here. Anterior, front, sternal costal, sternum costal, sternal ribs. So we're looking at the portion that lies towards this way. It's just behind the sternum and the ribs. It's formed mostly by the right ventricle. And finally, we have the left or pulmonary portion. Left, again, going towards your left. Pulmonary, we're talking about the lungs here. This is formed mostly by the left ventricle, found nestled in the concavity. Basically, you have a little indentation in the left lung where the heart rests inside. When you look at the cardiovascular, when you look at the respiratory system, or if you've already looked at it, or if you're going to look at it, you'll note that the lungs, the right lung, has three lobes, while the left lung has two lobes. It's very convenient considering that the heart is resting against that left lung. We want the extra space. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the often confusing but easily explained layers of the heart.